The Belko Experiment comes to us from the director of Wolf Creek and The Darkness. And is written by James Gunn of Guardians of the Galaxy fame. This film is about 80 employees in a small office building. Suddenly large metal doors surround the building and a voice comes over the intercom saying, if you guys don't kill a certain amount of people, well, we're going to kill double that amount. Have fun. And from that moment on, we have The Purge meets Battle Royale meets The Hunger Games meets Office Space, I guess. And John C. McGinley's even in it. All we need is Milton to kill somebody with his stapler. Um, um that's my, my stapler. Don't don't touch my stapler. I'm going to kill you with my stapler. But and I said, I, I don't care if they lay me off either, because I told I told Bill that if they move my desk one more time, then, then, I, then I'm quitting. I'm going to quit. I have a really good friend who's a fantastic screenwriter who often likes to joke about the pitch movie. Now, to him, a pitch movie is you walk into an office and you say, what if we made Beauty and the Beast, except the Beast is the Predator? You guys get what I'm saying? Whoever made Under Siege back in the day with Steven Seagal probably walked into an office and said, what if we made Die Hard except on a boat? The Belko Experiment is a fantastic pitch movie. It's a great concept. You could walk into an office and say, hey, for $5 million, I'll get you guys your money back. Let's do this idea about a bunch of people in an office and they're forced to kill each other. Okay, that's an easy sell. James Gunn's writing it. He's a big name now because of Guardians of the Galaxy. Let's do it. And that's what I like the most about this movie is the concept, the pitch, the social study of what will you do if you feel like you're forced to do something that you know is wrong. Will you pull that trigger? Will you try to defend yourself or will you allow your morals to do the right thing in this horrific moment? I loved that idea and after leaving the Belko experiment I can tell you that I basically just saw an extremely gory grindhouse version of that idea that had barely anything to say and did virtually every uninteresting thing you could have done with this situation. At every single turn the movie has an opportunity to do something creative. Even if you can't get creative with your idea, the movie has tons of opportunities to make creative kills or make at least that aspect of the movie fun, satirical, lighthearted, maybe a little enjoyable, perhaps in the know. But at every single turn, the movie chooses the less creative route and just goes for a bunch of deaths that really had no impact. And in the long run, the movie just kind of ends with the most on-the-nose setup for a sequel I've seen since Independence Day Resurgence, when they actually have an entire scene dedicated to setting up a sequel. This movie has a, <laughs> a moment where you're just like, oh, so there's going to be another one, I guess. Okay. Do I have a say? I love James Gunn as a writer. I like Slither, Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, the movie Super is extremely entertaining and kind of disgusting, but... It's different. I really admire him as a writer, and I think that his screenplay here had possibilities. There's something I'm going to be talking about pretty soon when I start doing my Alien reviews when it comes to Alien Resurrection. The screenplay that Joss Whedon wrote for Alien Resurrection is basically on screen, according to Whedon. His screenplay was pretty much preserved on screen, his ideas, his plotting, his dialogue. But the director of Alien Resurrection took his screenplay, which was more of a fun, light-hearted tone and turned it into a very serious movie. And so suddenly these two tones, writer and director, what they were both going for didn't work. The Belko experiment feels like it should have been a more light-hearted film. Despite the fact that it is a rather terrifying idea, there should have been a dose of satirical edge to this film, a dose of humor maybe just a slight ray of sunshine in this horrific situation. The way the film is helmed is so over the top and serious, and I get it. You know, I can understand why if you look at the screenplay, you could say, okay, this is a really horrifying, terrible situation, but the film doesn't do anything creative with it. I must go back to that. The entire idea of this film is a great idea. It's just that it's told in the most bland way that you could possibly imagine. And even if they were just going to go for a movie that's just about the kills, the kills are boring. There are times, I don't want to get into spoilers, but they just kind of, they just kind of fucking line people up and that's, that's it. I mean, there's a few moments where you're like, okay, that's some really impressive prosthetics, but overall, even that aspect of the movie, I don't think is going to please even the most bloodthirsty genre fan because I love horror movies. They're kind of my thing if they're done right. 
And this film had so many good ideas. And at just about every turn, they choose the more bland route. I honestly had more fun talking about this movie with my friend who I saw it with than I did watching the movie. Because both of us agreed that it was a fantastic idea. There was a good film in here somewhere. It was just waiting to blossom. But the way they go about telling the story is so routine and there's just nothing you can really take away from it in the end except for the idea that they want to make more. As I was watching it, I was thinking, this is okay. It feels kind of like something that John Carpenter would have made in like the early 70s, like an assault on Precinct 13. Just this very gory grindhouse film that is just completely balls to the wall, who gives a shit, let's just have some fun. But along the way, the film gets increasingly bleak and increasingly cynical to the point where the film really has nothing to say. And it's a movie that's kind of about a social experiment with nothing to say. That's not good. The film also has an absurd amount of red herrings. It follows one character for the entire film, who's like this side character they keep cutting back to. And it really goes nowhere in the long run. And when you look back on the film, that entire character just feels like wasted time to pad onto the runtime. There's this whole thing with water. They keep cutting to water. They keep discussing water. There's all these red herrings in this movie, these plot devices that are thrown at you. And you think, are they going to do something creative or different? Nope, it's just gonna be, you gotta kill a bunch of people for no reason. It's just, come on guys, let's, let's get some creativity going here with such a cool concept. And as for the ending, of course, I won't spoil it, but it just went, pfft, just ended. And there were so many good ideas. I had such a great idea for how they could end this. And I was really going to respect it because it seemed like maybe it was going in that direction. And I don't wanna get into it because it's spoilers, but it would have given the film something to latch onto where you're like, damn, that really says something. And I thought it would have been such a cool idea, but they didn't go a single place with it. In the long run, I was disappointed in the Belko experiment and I'm gonna give it a C. This movie really could have been something cool, but they just went nowhere with such a really great concept and it's disappointing. Also, I wanna make sure you guys know that my promotion with Adam Tickets is still going on. That's A-T-O-M Tickets. If you guys download this app to your mobile device and you use my name, Chris, as the promo code, you'll get $5 off your entire order through the end of the year. This is such a great mobile device for buying tickets directly from your phone. You can even pre-order concessions, skip the lines. So once again, if you guys do download the Adam Tickets app for your mobile device and use my name Chris that's five dollars off your order for the rest of the year which is kind of insane really <laughs> so definitely thanks so much to Adam for continuing to sponsor my videos you guys are the best thank you so much as always for watching and if you like this you can click right here and get stuckmanized